Hi guys, in this video I will be giving you a quick tour of the PhotoBooth CRM software. I'll try to keep it as short as I can. Uh, it's meant to be more of a general overview of the software just to give you an idea of what you can do with it. Uh, so I probably won't go into too much detail, but there's a lot to get through, so hopefully it doesn't take too long. Uh, so let's just jump on right in here. When you first sign in, you'll notice that there's a setup wizard that greets you. And this was kind of created really due to the feedback of a lot of users. The, the major complaint people had with other tools out there was that it took a lot of time and effort to get things set up. You had to spend hours watching tutorial videos, learning how the software worked, you know, so you can create all the workflows you need. Uh, the benefit of having a software that's geared specifically for photo booth businesses is that you can kind of sidestep a lot of that, a lot of that work because it, a lot of that stuff is preset out of the box for you. Uh, the workflows, all that, all that autoresponder stuff is set up for you right from the get-go. So hopefully we simplified as much as we could with this wizard. And you'll see that it's only a couple steps. Step one is the business and contact information. Just some general information about your business. Step two is the website integration. Now this is a key, a key thing that you need to implement in order for the software to work. This code on the bottom is what you embed onto your website so that the software interacts with your website. Uh, you can separate the form for each step onto different pages. So for example, you can have a page where they book, a separate page where they sign the contract, a separate page where the payment is made, and then after the event, you can also have a page that you send people you know, to leave a review for, for the rental. But for my example, I kept it simple. I have everything on the same page, as you can see. Uh, you can do whatever you like. But just to illustrate how simple and easy this is, all you would do is copy this link. And in my example, I would just go to my site and paste the code right in here. You just paste it in there and the code appears, the form appears, pretty simple. This is how it would look on the site. This is a very simple example, obviously. I didn't really put anything else on this page, just for example purposes. But just so you can see here, uh, it's got a lot more stuff on the page, but the form is still here. Now the cool thing about the form that we use is that it's more of a, a super form where it auto adjusts to your site so you don't have to mess with any fancy code to customize the font uh, any, any of that stuff. It's preset and auto adjusts to your site so you can see the background, the font, everything matches uh, to what I have on my page. It's that simple. Just paste it in there. And then you go on to the next step. Here's where you input your payment information. Uh, we com we're compatible with three payment processors out of the gate. It's PayPal, Stripe, and Authorize.net. In my example, I'm using PayPal. So all I need to do is input my PayPal email address. It's very simple. And select it as my default. And that's it. I continue. The fourth step is where you input your photo booths and your add-ons that you offer. So you'll see here, for my example, I have an enclosed booth and an open booth. Uh, it's pretty easy to add it. You just click Add Booth. You put in the name. You put in the pricing. So let's say $16.99 for two hours, $7.99 for three hours, and then $100 for each extra hour. You can put in the number of booths. And uh, the other cool thing is that you can set up a default for your setup and takedown time. So for example, if your open booth takes longer than your enclosed booth or vice versa, you can put in that it takes 45 minutes to set up and you know maybe a half hour to take down. This is pretty pretty handy because when customers try to book your, your booth through your site, the software knows how long it would take for you to set up. So they would never it would never allow people to book events too close to one another. It automatically you know calculates that for you. So if someone wants to book an event from seven to ten and it takes an hour to set up and someone else wants to book right before, it wouldn't allow them. It would block off your calendar from 6 to 11 in that example. Um, so that's kind of handy. And the add-ons is pretty simple as well. You just put the name, the price, and whether you want it available or not available. You have the ability to turn off add-ons whenever you like. It's pretty simple. Uh, and that's it. You're finished. And once you submit that, you are directed to the data import section of the settings. Now, this is another thing that people really, you know, were frustrated with when signing up for other tools is that, you know, forget about setting up the system to work. It took 
a lot of time to also input all of your you know past event data, your upcoming events, your customer information, your leads information, the contracts that people sign, your payment information, all that stuff. It took forever to import that. Uh, so we tried to come up with a way to save you some time and we created this little import tool. I'm not going to go into it too much here. I'll have a separate video for that. But just to you know give you a general overview, you just download this template. It's basically a simple Excel file. And in this file, you would input all of your data, your customer's name, their contact information, the price of the rental, the timing of the rental, the date of the rental, all that stuff. You would input it into this spreadsheet and then you just upload it and everything instantly flows into the software. Uh, I understand, you know, it's probably annoying to fill in the spreadsheet, but there's really no other way around that. And I found that, it, you know, people were very happy with this part of the tool. It saves you a lot of time, especially if you have a lot of events coming up and you're a bigger business. It would take you forever to manually input things one by one. So hopefully this saves you some time. Uh, once you do that step, you're basically good to go. You can go through your settings here just to make sure everything's fine. Again, you fill this in, your user info, you can put in your email signature that is you know, on the bottom of all of the emails that go out with the software. Here's the web form section again. We already went through these steps here, but you also have the ability to customize you know, additional information from the web form. So you can request as much information or as little information as you want up front. It's completely up to you. Uh, you would just select it here, you know, whether you want to display the phone number, for example, and is it required or not, you can customize this however you'd like. You can even put things like event type, you know, where do they hear about you, and then you would input what you would want to be, a, what you would want to appear on the drop down in these boxes here. Um, and that's basically it for the web form. The add-ons you already saw, but you can customize it here. The photo booths here as well, the payment info that you input here as well. But you'll see that you can also customize, you know, what you require as a deposit, whether it's based on the dollar amount or percentage of the total amount. Uh, you can also set when the payments are due. So if you require it to be paid in full 10 days before, two weeks before, whatever you'd like, you put that right here. Uh, you also can put in your sales tax here if you collect sales tax. And the, the thing to note is that this is just to make things easier. If you have an event where you don't want to collect a deposit or you don't want to charge a tax, you can customize and adjust any event manually whenever you'd like. This is just the default for the overview, overall way everything would function. And here you'll see that you can select email alerts that you want to receive or opt out of, up to you, whether you want to get emails for book for when contracts are signed, when deposits are received, etc. You can pick what you want to get. Um, the Probably the other thing that we want to touch on here is that you have electronic contracts that you set up here. So just in this example, I'll show you this test contract right here. Very simple, two-pager. I upload the contract, and once you upload it, you pop into the wrench icon, and you just scroll to the bottom, and you can put in the fields that require input. So you'll see here that you know, anything with a C is required to be filled in by the customer. Anything with a P is you. And this, this is a very simple example. Again, you can put in as much stuff as you like. Uh, the other cool thing here is that we also have merge fields. This, this is based on the feedback from a lot of photo booth owners that a lot of the contract softwares out there that you, you purchase it makes it a little difficult for the customer because they already go through your booking process. They fill in all their information. But when it comes time to sign the contract electronically, they have to re-input their name, their event date, you know, all that stuff has to be input again manually. And that's kind of a frustration for the customer experience. In our software, we have merge fields where you can input, let's say, the customer's first name or their email address or their cost or their event start date, etc. You already have it in your system. There's no reason to have them input it again. It's just something that saves them some time. So here I can have a merge field for their first name instead of having them fill it in themselves. So I can X that out and just drag this in there and this would be automatically populated for them, for example. But I'll dive into the contracts you know, more in depth in a, in a later video. That just gives you an idea. 
here you'll see you'll have statuses, you know, whether it was executed and signed, whether the customer still needs to sign, whether you need to sign the contract still, you can see it at a quick glance. You can also head on over to the customer section. The other cool thing to note here is that we have a search feature where it's an instant search. So let's say I'm searching for Mike. It's an instant search feature. You don't have to enter and wait for it to load. Here you'll see whether people are leads and customers. You have some quick you know, overall info on them. You also can add people manually. This is helpful for those of you who get a lot of people on the phone and you don't want to direct them to your page. You can fill this in while you're speaking to them on the phone. Uh, their information goes on the left. The event info here, you know, it's a pop-up for the date and the time, so you don't have to type it in. The cost, the address, what they want to book exactly, what add-ons they want to book, the number of each. You have a lot of uh, flexibility here to uh, customize the quote. You can change the tax, you can take the tax out, you can change when the payment is due, etc. But when people fill in the form on your website, their information is automatically flowed through this section. So you don't have to do this for everybody. Uh, the other cool thing that we have here, well, let's let's hop into the calendar just to show you how that looks quickly. Uh, this is where you'll be able to view all your events quickly at a glance. So here in this example, uh, let's say you click an event, you have the customer's information, their number, the address of the location. You can see the total quote price on top. What's the balance due? You can view their contract. If you click this, the contract appears. Uh, did the customer have any special requests? Do you have an internal memo for your employees that helps them with the event? You'll see the setup takedown time here. Do you want an email notification before the event? You can put that in here. Uh, you can basically see everything you need to see right from the calendar. The other cool thing is the dashboard. Now when you log in, this is where you would be directed to when you first log in. And again, this is just a test account. So a lot of the metrics here may not make sense or they may be blank, but just to give you an idea of how things would work, you have a pending item section here that will you know, let you know things that are important. So for example, here you'll see, you can get an alert for you know contracts that are awaiting your signature. Are there any balances that are due? Did anyone sign a contract but not pay their deposit yet, et cetera. And there are a lot more um, that may appear. And you can just click on it to take the required action. You can also get a snapshot in this section. You'll see that you can see a lot of detail. Uh, how many leads do you have new this month? You can make it for whatever time period you like. How much money did you collect? How much money is still due to collect? How many events you have, etc. You also have the metrics here that I think are pretty cool. Uh, this is more of a comparison. So this, this gives you a quick uh, insight into how your business is doing compared to a time period before. So here you see this month versus last month. You can see this year versus last year. And it compares how many leads, how many customers, how much money, you know, how your email engagement is like, how many reviews you got for this time period compared to last time period. It's pretty handy to see how your business is doing. We also have an averages section here that is kind of a running total of how much average revenue you get per event, how many events you get per month, what's your monthly revenue uh, for all time for the last 12 months. We have a chart here that shows you the year to date, uh, the comparison of how many events you're booking and how much revenue you're collecting in each month. You also will have a pie chart in the bottom that shows you how much money is paid versus how much is still due to be collected. So you can see whether you've collected 80% of your, your upcoming events or not. Um, the other cool thing to note about the dashboard is that it's completely customizable to what you like. So if you don't want the calendar on the top, if the snapshot's more important to you, you can just drag that up here and that's what you would see. You can move these around any way you'd like. It's completely up to you. And that's basically, I guess, everything that you would need to know for a general overview on the software side. We're coming up on 15 minutes in this video, so I'll cut it here. I know there's some things that I didn't get to, like the autoresponders, and also what the whole process looks like from the customer's point of view. But I'll leave that for another video, and I really look forward to getting your guys' feedback on this. Uh, your input is the only thing I listen to 
when I build the software. So I, I would really appreciate hearing from you guys. Thank you for watching.